project here, which is this uh, storm blade from uh, the Imperial Militia list. This is going to be a Renegade Militia storm blade, so with that in mind, I've done a few minor tweaks to it, including putting on some chaos spikes here, um, and carving all the Imperial Eagles off with a Dremel. The idea behind that was just that it makes it easier for later on when I actually put Chaos Stars over the top. One of the minor things that I've done to the kit is with the fuel drums, I've actually put a tiny bit of resin in the tips of them because these normally have a terrible mold line that you just can't get rid of down the centers. That problem is no more. I've also magnetized the sponsons and I'll be painting these two tracks separate, which I've put a pin through and built some small etched brass for. This tank design is actually going to be loosely based on the Medusa out of the first modeling masterclass from Forge World. I'll actually I'll quickly flick to the page. So we should end up with something fairly similar to that. If I actually put it in the center of frame. We should end up with something fairly similar to that by the time this project is all said and done. So, first thing we're going to start with today is we're going to be airbrushing on the primary hull color. The primary hull color is gray, but it's going to be done in two steps. It's going to have a flat gray pretty much all over. Then we're going to pick out the central part of all the different panels using a different grey and then lastly if I'm feeling like it I might do a little bit of scorched brown type detailing around the rivets and panel lines but I'm probably going to hold off on that until we do the second layer which is the whole camouflage. The paints I'm actually using today are some charred stone from Miniatear and some concrete slab from Miniatear. Charred stone will be going on first We'll be using the airbrush to actually apply all of this. Um, so if you're doing this by hand, this tutorial probably won't help you out too much. Also, I'll be using a respirator the whole time um, because even though these two paints are pretty user-friendly, the thinners and such used with them can be pretty nasty stuff and the paints are toxic if you have too much. I do apologise with the mask on as my voice will be obscured a bit if I am talking about what I'm going through as I do it. Alright, now I'm pitted up like Darth Vader. Airbrushing something is a lot like when you paint something normally. You want to start in one area, cover an entire area and work your way around. You want to have a real pattern to it, um, otherwise you end up chasing your tail.
When you have details like this, you've got to make sure you actually hit them from multiple directions or else you won't actually get all the areas that are assessed. Alright, that's one side done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go on, I'm going to paint the entire tank in this way, and then we'll come back for the next right, step. guys, welcome back. What I've done here is I've used the charred stone to base coat the entire tank, the turrets, and all the wheels, pretty much, yeah, the whole tank. What I'm going to do from here is I'm going to use some concrete slab, and I'm going to do the next part, which is highlighting the individual panels themselves. This is going to take a while. Um, again, I'll show you the gist of how we do it, do a few panels, then I'll cut away to one I've prepared earlier. I'm going to start on the left side again and work my way across. Just going to get a finer strain on my airbrush first. I want it to be nice and easily controlled. What I'm doing is I'm picking out just the individual panel. I'm trying to stay away from the panel edges. Penny that section's like Penny and McDonald's logo. This kind of painting is very forgiving. So, as you can see, I'm focusing on the main central parts of the panels. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go around, I'm going to complete the entire tank using that metal. All the panel lines are filled in. However, in preparation for the camouflage tones I'm going to be putting on, I have actually used a semi-gloss varnish over the entire surface of the miniature. Because of that, it actually looks really shiny right now, but if I can move it in the light and dull it, you're actually able to see the different panel lines and how the panels themselves are nice and bright in the centers, but very dull and the darkest stone color towards the edges. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go away and I'm gonna start taping up this vehicle. Um, I'm gonna be using a low tack masking tape on it. Uh, you can use any type of tape. My favorite brand of tape for this is uh, the Tamiya. They're really good tapes. Um, they do cost a bit though, so when doing something large like this, I often will actually substitute for something like a regular masking tape. Um, any Home Depot, Bunnings Warehouse, um, possibly even Walmart in America, I'm not sure. They usually sell them though. Again, you want something that's low tack so it doesn't peel off the paint which is also part of why I've gloss varnished it. All right, I'm gonna go away, put the tape on, and when I come back, I'll apply the last few bits on camera just so that people get the idea what we're doing with it, and then we'll start the airbrushing. All right. I've gone ahead and taped up most of the vehicle now. There's still a few sections that need doing, and right now I'm working on the front of the tank here. Important thing to note when you're doing camouflage schemes is that camouflage itself shouldn't be symmetrical. You shouldn't have 45 degrees all over the place. What you need is, like I've done here, just a random pattern of tape. The more random it is, the more realistic it is. Something I learned when I was in the army is that when you have a 
person and they're camouflaged, the more they move, the more they create shadows, the more symmetrical they look, the easier they are to spot. The human eye is really good at spotting things that don't look right in a certain environment. We easily spot trees in cities. We easily spot round, smooth objects in the bushes, such as a helmet. These vehicles, I'm treating exactly the same way. The camouflage pattern I'm putting on it is randomized completely. What I'm gonna do from this point on is I'm going to continue applying just this front surface, just so you can see what I'm doing and the techniques. Now, I've already adhered it down along the side. What I'm doing is I'm using a dry brush and my tweezers. The idea is that I'm trying to get in under objects, around objects, and I'm using the brush to help me press down. Because the brush allows me to put some firm weight onto the object without actually dam risking damage to the paint. It allows me that when I come up to a line, to get a nice solid blend. Sometimes, like here, you'll have to work around an object like this railing. You just gotta play with the tape a bit, and if it's really bad, like it was um, working up on the cupola area at the top here, um, then sometimes you'll just have to cut the tape, put it under an object or over the object. Down here it isn't so bad, so you'll be able to skip doing that. Just using my tweezers to push it into the corner. And then bring it over the top. And again, I want to get a good bond with the corners because these little rivets, anywhere that there's a corner in the panels, paint can potentially seep under there and we really don't want that. Rather than try and do the entire panel in just one piece of tape, what I like to do is I like to alternate pieces of tape along there because it's just easier to work with on the long term with the project. Point out while I'm doing this that this area in the middle here is going to be camouflaged. So this whole area here will actually get taped off later on. But the important part when you're doing this kind of taping is the actual, you want that nice firm edge bond all the way around the edge of the tape. The tape that goes over this part, that's just cover tape. That doesn't need to be firmly adhered. It's just got to have no air gaps where airbrushing can actually get under it. As you can see all these rivets create a bit of a nightmare to tape around. But with a little bit of effort, you will get there. off the excess so taping is that simple again it's not something that I'm going to show you the entire vehicle as I do it because it's just going to take forever show you the basics you can experiment it with yourself um, what I'll do now is I'll tape off all the other areas that need taping when we get back we'll start yeah, brushing in the actual fill cut so now we've completed all the taping what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some cracked soil from Miniatear and I'm going to use this paint to do the first layer of camouflage all over the tank. So masks on. Right, so there we go. take several runs before you actually get the correct depth of colour. 
So don't try and take it all on at once or else you're just going to get uh, large wet patches that are no good. Always give it plenty of drying time if you can um, before you try and give it another coat. So get the idea, what I'm going to do now is give it a couple of coats, complete the entire tank in this colour, then I'll come back and do now that I've done that is go on with a mix of 70-30 cracked soil and rough skin from Miniature, which is this one here, or rugged skin, sorry. And what I'm going to do is use those slightly fleshier tones to add a few details around panel lines, things like that.
on that. I can actually remove the tape and we can see what we've got. Now, it could take a little while to remove all the tape, but I'm hoping to remove it fairly quickly and at least show part of the hull. big trick is again not to pull the paint. If you put too much paint on it once it can flow under where you've actually sealed the tape. It's really important not to do that. I didn't bother putting the camouflage on the gun itself because the gun is going to be painted separate colours at a different time. In case anyone was wondering. And if you peel off camouflage paint tape, you kind of feel like a little kid at Christmas, I reckon. You just wait to see what the present is inside. So far, it looks pretty good. The big trick is just not to saturate it. If you colour overload, then you're just your own worst enemy. If you do make any minor mistakes along the way, don't worry because as we continue on with the project and start the weathering, um, a lot of the mistakes will get hidden by that. Well, you can see I didn't seal it correctly here, so it's slightly less sharp line. But that's alright, once we start sponge damage, that whole area there will not matter so much. used a whole 50 cents of tape so far on the project, it's sending me broke. Here's a joke for you, if Games Workshop released a mask and tape, how much do you reckon it would cost? There you go, two-tone camouflage. It's nice, it's simple, and it looks pretty good. Anyone could go and play with this tank here as it is now without the weathering. You know, all you need to do is paint up the guns and a few details. We're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna end this video here, but when we come back for the next one, we're gonna do sponge weathering over all of this tank, and then we're gonna go on to doing things like oils, panel lines, we're going to use some of these AK things like streaking grime, um, rust streaks, we're also going to do a bit of work with some of the secret weapon weathering powders, and overall this is going to be a really fun project as it develops over the next couple of days and weeks.